Welcome to Spooky History. In this episode, we're heading out to the clear and cold seas of Scotland with the Storm Kelpies. How long could you spend just listening to the sounds of the sea? The waves rise, fall, crash and lick the gunnels of your boat. The salt crystallises in your hair and sticks to your taste buds. The winds shave your skin red raw and the sky darkening on the horizon, turning the water that murky, dull, greenish black. Danger never too far away. A dark void swells, ever present beneath you, bobbing your vessel up and down, almost teasing you. You, your whole crew, they're alive only because this void permits it. For now. Hoist the sails, coming about round the Shiant Islands. You've set yourself a course for the lonely strait of the Minch. Here, notoriously treacherous tides raise the stomach acid to your throat. In the rocky cliffs, caves peer at you like dark eyes. Something's watching you, timing you. The swell lifts you. Your stomach lurches as you gasp in a breath of salty air. You're reminded once more why locals call this strait the current of destruction. Sounds like a 60s song. Geographically, the Minch is an oceanic dividing line between the inner and outer Hebrides of northwest Scotland. Around 70 miles worth of sea, up to 45 miles wide. The archipelago of the outer Hebrides is a different world. Beautiful, and steeped in folklore since humans settled there millennia ago. How many vessels have been lost out there? Countless songs and ballads lament them. The sea is a beauty and a monster, filled with monsters. None know this better than the island communities, for what is survival on an island without the sea? Fishing and shipping trades are the life's blood. It dominates the culture and salt flows through their veins. Stories, songs, music, mysteries and legends were passed down generations, for nothing couldn't go wrong on the water. Nature plays tricks. The wind roars along with crying gulls. One could almost mistake them for voices and human wailing, and that strange shape floating just beneath the water, like a porpoise or dolphin. There's another one. Out there, see it? We're being followed. Gather all your wits, Skipper. They're the only thing that'll save you now. For no sailor can outrun the Storm Kelpies. And this was their home. No tales of them abound elsewhere. Just here. Legend has it that long, long ago, a tribe of fallen angels dropped to Earth. But this was no ordinary fall. The descent split this tribe forever into three different phenomena. One became the ground fairies, creatures of mischief, cunning, and magic. The other maintained its freedom to waltz the skies as the merry dancers, or what you would call the northern lights. The third, oh, the third. Well, they're about to capsize your boat and drown your crew, Skipper. The violent storms they raise will send you all to the bottom of the sea as they look on and laugh. Oh, you won't be there first, and you certainly won't be there last. It's just what they do. And you've entered their territory during the winter months, my friend, when they're at their most dangerous. More of them are gathering now, enough for you to see clearly. What well, you mistook for a pod of dolphins raise slimy grey arms to tread the foam. Between crashing waves, a series of blue heads emerge, marking you with long grey faces human-sized, yet so inhuman. You've heard the stories and you know what you're in for. The next few minutes are critical and shall decide the fate of your vessel, for these blue men of the Minch, as they're also known, can not only speak and understand human languages, they have a protocol and there's nothing you can do about it. You'll have to play along. Are you ready? The game is this. If they're spotted approaching your vessel, there's only one means of escape. The answer, of all things in this ancient mystical world, a rap battle. That's right. 
The Blue Men's Chief, named Shoney, surfaces and challenges the skipper with two lines of poetry. Your job as captain is to reply with another two lines, and so on and so forth. And yes, it seems rhyming was compulsory. By some accounts, they were even bold enough to climb on board. But if you don't play along, or don't answer fast enough, or if Shoney simply doesn't like crap rap, sorry, what can I say? Nice knowing ya. Oof! Tough crowd, this lot! When not creating havoc at sea, these blue men lived in dark caves of the Xi'ant Islands, and were even rumoured to play shinty on calmer summer evenings. Now, like all party poopers, one might be inclined to don their professor's monocle, open a few dusty ledgers, and ask, From whence arose this maritime myth? What perfectly natural phenomena inspired such anthropomorphic projection? Well, first and most likeable option is, you accept we had, or still have, humanoid sea creatures ready to do a spa with m, &M. Or, second, we do the mundane thing and try equating these tales with some historical fact. And sadly, one of their possible origins is no more pleasant than the sinking of ships. That is to say, the slave trade. But we're talking a lot further back than you think. The Viking era. Not very many people know that some of the Vikings had Moorish slaves, and according to the Annals of Ireland during the 9th century, they had travelled with them to Ireland, where, on the way, they resided by the Xi'an Islands. According to folklorist David A. Mackenzie, these blue men were slaves that had been marooned. This argument is further supported by one Scottish Gaelic interpretation of Hia Yorma, blue men to black men. Others argue the slaves were in fact North African from the Sahara, a population once described as the Blue Men of the Desert. Nor does it end there. Another quite different theory is the Storm Kelpies were the tattooed or painted people translated from the Latin Picti. Sound familiar? The Picts! Whom we still don't know enough about. Indeed, there are precious few recorded sightings of these Blue Men of the Minch, apart from the tale of one Blue Man who was captured by sailors, tied to the vessel, then chased by his Storm Kelpie brothers, who apparently called themselves Duncan and Donald. Who knows if they sank that particular ship or not, but according to folklore, if you've a sharp wit and a quick tongue, such as this captain in Mackenzie's book, the Blue Men have no choice but to let you sail through unharmed. Man of the Black Cap, what do you say, as your proud ship cleaves the brine? My speedy ship takes the shortest way, and I'll follow you line by line. My men are eager, my men are ready, to drag you below the waves. My ship is speedy, my ship is steady. If it sank, it would wreck your caves. Chicka chicka, slim shady. I hope you enjoyed that episode. You can find us on most social media at Spooky His Show, and you can support us with the donations at paypal.me forward slash noisy ghost ent. If you have suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear them. Just leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and please, do you have nightmares? Goodbye. <laughs>